Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai, India. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss at length a common obstetric diagnosis of a bygone era that is cephalopelvic disproportion. I will discuss in particular the most important cause of CPD that is contracted pelvis. In this first part I will discuss the definition, etiology and clinical findings suggestive of contracted pelvis. In the second part I will talk about the investigations and management of CPD. The link to part 2 is given below. Cephalopelvic disproportion is defined as a mismatch that is disproportion between the fetal head which is the passenger and maternal pelvis which is the passage. However, the better term should be fetopelvic disproportion as the presentation is not always cephalic. It may be a breech presentation. The most important absolute cause of fetopelvic disproportion is a contracted pelvis. However, it can occur due to other causes such as hydrocephalus, fetal macrosomia and malpresentations like brow and face presentations. In this lecture, I will only discuss contracted pelvis. The standard anatomical definition of contracted pelvis is a pelvis in which one or more of its essential diameters is or are shortened by more than one centimeter. But there can be situations where the reduction is less than one centimeter and yet mechanism of labor is affected and on the other hand it could be very much reduced and yet a small premature baby can deliver through it. So what matters is whether this baby will pass through the pelvis or not. So we have another definition which is called as the obstetric definition which is any pelvis in which any of the essential diameters are reduced so as to alter the mechanism of normal labor. The prevalence of contracted pelvis showed a considerable geographical variation. The figures reported in the past were 15% in Africa, around 5% in India and less than 2% in Western countries. Severe malnutrition, tuberculosis and rickets were the common causes of contracted pelvis in the past in India and Africa. However, with the improvement in nutritional status and reduction in the incidence of rickets, moderate to severe pelvic contraction is rarely seen these days in India. In developed nations, contracted pelvis is very seldom encountered in modern obstetrics. The etiology of contracted pelvis will be discussed under the following headings. Hereditary and genetic factors are responsible for some women having short stature and small abnormal or contracted pelvises. Basically, according to Caldwell and Molloy classification, there are four basic types of pelvises. Gynecoid pelvis, Android pelvis, Anthropoid pelvis and Platypeloid pelvis. The percentages are shown here. The type of pelvis which a woman has depends on the racial profile of the woman. For example, anthropoid pelvis is more common in women of African American race whereas platypoloid that is a flat pelvis is more common in mongoloid women. White Caucasian women including Asian women have a normal gynecoid pelvis and are therefore very unlikely to have contracted pelvis. Another cause is congenital and developmental anomalies of the pelvis. Some women have congenitally small gynecoid that is a generally contracted pelvis. Absence of ala of sacrum on one or both sides is called Negley's or Roberts pelvis respectively. This will result in obliquely contracted pelvis. 
osteomalacia and triradiate pelvis are other examples of pelvic contraction in high assimilation pelvis the sacrum is composed of six vertebrae which increases the angle of pelvic inclination this is obstetrically bad for delivery in low assimilation pelvis the sacrum is composed of four vertebrae which decreases the angle of pelvic inclination this poses no problem for vaginal delivery one of the worst type of contracted pelvis seen in the past was funnel shaped pelvis in this pelvis the pelvic capacity diminishes as one goes from the inlet to the outlet the subcubic angle is acute that is narrow side walls are convergent and intertuberous diameter is 8 cm or less metabolic factors responsible for contracted pelvis are rickets renal rickets and osteomalacia which develops after rapid succession of many deliveries development of rickets in childhood prior to the child starting to walk will produce soft osteoid tissue resulting in a rickettic triradiate pelvis traumatic causes of contracted pelvis include dislocation of hip joint malunited fracture of pelvis fibrous union of a pelvic fracture and fracture or ankylosis of the sacrococcygeal joint another important cause of contracted pelvis especially in india is tuberculosis of the hip joint we still see it these days from time to time tumors of pelvic bone such as osteoblastoma which protrude into the pelvic cavity will compromise its capacity leading to a cpd problem diseases of the lower limb such as poliomyelitis diseases of spine like lumbar kyphosis or scoliosis and spondylolithiasis can produce oblique or asymmetric pelvis contributing to cpd diagnosis of contracted pelvis rests on triage of history examination and investigations in past medical history ask about history of rickets suspect rickets if there is a history of delayed walking or delayed dentition history of poliomyelitis in childhood or any pelvic trauma or pelvic fractures if she is a multi para inquire about past obstetric history of prolonged labor difficult forceps or vacuum extraction fresh stillbirth neonatal convulsions or mental retardation in a previous child or previous cesarean section or rupture uterus it is important to measure the height on general examination height less than 5 feet that is 152 cm in the western world or height less than 4 feet 10 inches that is 147 cm in india is considered short stature and is indicative of contracted pelvis women with small feet that is shoe size less than 3 are also more prone to have contracted pelvis also look for abnormal gait limb deformity spinal deformity such as kyphosis and scoliosis on general examination since rickets is the most important metabolic cause of contracted pelvis look for the following phenotypical features of rickets bow legs because of soft bones pigeon chest which is a prominent chest square head because of frontal and parietal bossing rosary beads and harrison's groove which is indentation of the low ribs at the site of attachment of diaphragm if you come across a woman who is short stocky with a bull neck broad shoulders and short thighs masculine hair distribution and gives history of delayed menarche and is subfertile it strongly suggests a characteristic phenotype called dystocia dystrophia syndrome such women are 
prone to have android pelvis and are more prone to a pregnancy with occipito posterior position following findings on obstetric examination are pointers to contracted pelvis pendulous abdomen in a primary gravida floating head at term in a primary gravida in a primary gravida with a contracted pelvis the head cannot engage at 37 to 38 weeks and remains floating at term and thus falls forward giving the appearance of a pendulous abdomen an important cause of malpresentations and malpositions is contracted pelvis talking about pendulous abdomen as shown in this picture the lateral appearance of abdomen in pregnant women depends on their parity in primary gravida with a resilient abdominal wall the appearance is acuminate that is a pointed abdomen whereas in multiparous women with lax anti abdominal wall muscles it is pendulous this concludes part 1 of my e lecture on contracted pelvis please click on the link given to see part 2 For further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology refer to the following books written by me Practical Obstetrics and Gynecology 5th edition Modern Obstetrics 2nd edition Modern Gynecology 2nd edition Clinical Cases in Obstetrics Questions and Answers 2nd edition clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers second edition and pelvic reconstructive surgery if you have found this video useful and informative please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking here